Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Right, so I just want to do a, um, a quick video tonight. It'll, I'll make it two parts, looking at the, um, the variable frequency oscillator that we'll use for this double sideband radio. Because it's going to be a direct conversion radio, we're going to need the VFO to output um, a frequency the same as our frequency of operation. For example, if we're tuned to, say, 3.7 megahertz, then we'll need to have the VFO also producing uh, 3.7 megahertz, and once it's mixed, we'll recover the audio. But anyway, that's that's for later. But so what I want to cover today in the first part of this two two part uh, VFO um, videos is to look at wiring up the SI5351. So let me just I'm move the camera around a bit. So I apologise for uh, any movement there. Um, so what we have down here is um, a little Arduino Uno and as we can see down the corner here the SI5351 don't worry too much about the um, the screen that's hanging off the bottom down here or the rotary encoder um, I'll cover that um, when I do the next video looking at the software but like I say today just looking at the SI5351 now I've had a couple of questions about um, spending a little bit more time uh, looking at how the SI5351 is wired up because um, uh, I understand there's quite a bit of interest out there for, for using it so I'll, I'll, I'll labour the point a little bit and I apologise for that but hopefully it'll um, answer all the questions so anyway so just sort of looking back at how it's been wired up I'll just to, uh, bring this camera back a little bit so as you just said um, if you look at down there there's a, a, a header on the, uh, on the front of the SI5351 um, at this stage we're only interested in four wires or four of those um, we're interested in ground, VCC, SDA and, SC and SCL. So the SDA and SCL are part of the I2C uh, communication suite that um, basically allows the, the, uh, the Arduino down here to talk to and command the SI5351. So what we want to do then, we want to bring back, uh, for a start, VCC and ground back onto the board. Ground goes to ground obviously and 5 volts goes to VCC. Um, if I was just to get myself a pencil, that's what we can see down there. So we've got the, um, the red wire there coming off that um, VCC line. It's, it's labelled VCC on the SI5351, going back there into that line there, which is the 5 volt line, and the green one is Earth. The other two coming off that, the SDA and the SCL, um, that's the blue and the yellow wire there. So they're coming down there and then going straight across onto the board. Now, depending on which board you have, this particular board has um, on the top right hand corner, just up here, uh, a dedicated lines for S, uh, SCL and SDA. So it just matter of just wiring those directly across onto, uh, onto the board. However, if you've got say something like, like this, a little um, uh, Pro Mini, um, it'll be on A4 and A5. Now, on this little board like this, A4 and A5 are just sitting here. So you need to pick up on those two wires there, or those two um, connections there. So A4, if, you, uh, if you're just to Google Pro Mini pins, or uh, Pro Mini pins layout, you'll, there's you know, many, many images on the internet of the layout of all these pins. And you'll see that A4 is SDA, and A5 is labelled uh, SCL. Um, that's the same thing for the the nano. It's the same, um, and also your f okay. So full stop. Uh, this uh, Leonano board here has the dedicated S uh, SDA and SCL, um, and I've got some other older style um, boards which don't have that. Um, they don't have those dedicated lines there, and you have to go and pick up on A4 and A5 directly down here to get those. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is before you go and just wire it up per, as I did it, just look at the board you've got, um, go and find the image on the internet and just confirm uh, if, you, if you're going to have to use A4 and A5 or you're going to have dedicated lines. Um, if you've got the dedicated ones it's pretty obvious because they're sitting there. Anyway, probably enough said on that one. Um, so in terms of actually connecting the two together, that's all that's required to, uh, to get the SI5351 to talk. Um, and then we'll just cover the library. 
Uh, right, so I don't think there's any more I need to cover off on that. So in terms of the library, let me just zoom back out. Um, like like many things um, with the Arduino, there's, there's multiple libraries that uh, drive um, similar um, hardware. For me, the library that I've settled on and I've been using now for the last couple of years and I'm, I'm comfortable with it and for me it works well is this EtherKit library. So if you were to Google EtherKit SI5351 library or just EtherKit 5351 uh, you'll find several links. Um, one of the links takes you to, if I just click on this other tab up here, oh, maybe just push the button, might be easier, uh, is on the actual Arduino libraries info site. Um, I don't particularly use this site to get my libraries. I get mine directly from GitHub. Um, so here on GitHub is the EtherKit library. On the bottom right hand side there you can see clone or download. So just by clicking on that you can download the library uh, and then within the... Um, let me just find my mouse again. It means it disappeared too. That's very frustrating. <laughs> uh, just when you don't want it to happen. Um, gosh, that's annoying. Oh, here it is. Back. I have no idea what happened there. Um, right, anyway, so I've got the, uh, the the library up here, and then it's just a matter of going into, uh, was it uh, edit? Where is it? Libraries. Where's the libraries gone? Tools include library, and then you can add a zip. That's the one. Uh, and then you can navigate to where that file has been downloaded and suck it on in. Once you have uh, loaded that up, uh, under examples, you'll find. Um, the EtherKit 5351 um, library and several examples. Uh, just grab any one of those, um, maybe just a calibration one for a start and we're going to talk about that in a sec, just to double check that you actually are talking to it and you're outputting a signal. Um, and we'll cover more how I use that library in the next video, but what I wanted to cover on the second half of this particular video is the calibration. So the calibration sketch, uh, the example that comes with that particular library is, is right there and this is what this is here. Now I have uploaded that into the Arduino and this particular step um, you want to do if you want to really make sure that your uh, SI5351 is outputting as close to the actual frequency that you're after. Um, that's all I'm going to say there. Uh, I do tend to calibrate my, my, my um, SI5351s before I use them, um, and this is the process that I, I do. So by running that by running that calibration program, I'm now outputting on clock zero a 10 megahertz signal. Now if you were to then feed that into a really nice accurate uh, frequency counter, you could then, and I'll show, show you in a sec, adjust that output to be spot on 10 megahertz. And you do that uh, through that sketch, once it's uploaded, you go to Tools, um, Serial Monitor, and it brings up on the Serial Monitor uh, a very simple um, menu system. And you can see here uh, up and down in Hertz, so I can adjust that 10 megahertz signal uh, by uh, 1 hertz at a time, or 0.1 or 0.01, up to 10 kilohertz. By either, if I want to increment for, say, the 10 kilohertz here, I enter P up here and then push Enter. If I want to decrement, it's the semicolon. And down here, as, as you do that for these various um, different increments, you, it outputs and tells you what the current difference is between um, 10 megahertz and what you're outputting and then you use that in turn to the, actually feed back into um, back into your actual sketch you're going to use is this set correction factor down here so what we're going to do now is just run through the process that I have been using to determine what this um, difference is and then tomorrow or whenever I do the next video and we talk about the software for uh, doing the VFO, you will see where I've actually incorporated that offset or that correction factor more the point in the in the code. So, uh, just to recap then, I have 
um, loaded up that example calibration sketch. I have squirted that up and loaded that into the um, Arduino. That has now commanded the SI5351 to output a 10 megahertz signal. Now, um, I don't have, um, I've got a couple and I was very kindly given one, but I don't have, the process I'm using to to determine the frequency is not by using a, um, a frequency counter. Um, I, I don't have one that goes right down to where I want it to get to. So what I've sort of settled on using uh, is the XY functionality within um, within the oscilloscope. So what that does, and I'm not going to go into the theory of how the XY mode works on an oscilloscope, but essentially you feed in two signals um, and the waveform then will, will tell you what you're seeing in terms of the phase difference and the frequency difference. Now, so at the moment, my X signal coming in here is coming from um, the signal generator over here, and the Y is coming in from the second signal generator. So all I'm doing there is just comparing the two signal generators that are both outputting 10 megahertz signals on the XY mode. And you can see here as I if I if I can just get both in there I can as I just subtly increase one of those uh, one hertz at a time you can see I've, I've I've gone out come back down a bit and we're getting very close to being the same frequency there. If that was spot on the same frequency I'd have, I'd have a, a solid circle that was the same phase as well but it's just ever so slightly rotating uh, because I've got a um, a slight phase difference, and the frequency is pretty well the same. If I go if I go wildly off, so if I was to go say um, that's on 88, let's go up to I don't know, let's go up here somewhere. You can see the waveform is 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 not that nice circle that I'm after. And the higher frequency you go, you'll start to get other shapes. Like I say, not going to go into the theory of of x y because if I do, I'll get it wrong. Um, suffice to say, all I'm aiming for with in this in this approach is to get um, a nice circle when I compare the output when I do change this over the output of the SI5351 and my reference signal coming from the SIGGEN. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to return the SIGGEN back to um, 10 megahertz and I have to make the assumption that my signal generator is actually calibrated and accurate um, and then I can change the input to the oscilloscope across to this other one here. Let me just go back to off. Um, just change the earth across. And I'll just do a cheat way. I'll just go back to auto setup just to reset everything. And then back to acquire XY on. Okay, right. So for a start, what we're seeing there is it's not a circle. The reason why it's not a circle is because um, I have a square wave coming out of the DSI 5351, but the what I'm trying to get, you can just start to see there. That's it's ever starting to rotate there, so I'm not quite right on the frequency. Um, if I can get that to be a rel relatively solid and ever so slightly moving um, square, then um, I'm going to be about right in terms of having my SI 5351 output being the same frequency as my reference oscillator over here. Um, and for interest's sake, I've also set up um, that the uh, the amplification or the X and Y amplification on the, uh, the two vertical scales are the same. Righty ho. So um, what I can do now is back on the screen over here. I'm going to uh, change or command through that menu system within the serial uh, monitor here. I'm going to uh, force the SI5351 through the serial cable there to change its frequency and I'll see if I can't sharpen that up um, and bring back bring that back to being um, sort of solid. So at the moment I'm, I'm on minus 191 and I'm going to try and change that if I get the right keys. Um, that wasn't the right one, let me go across to here, click on that. Okay right, so now I'm just starting to increase one hertz at a time. That's getting not too far off there, so it's just starting to be quite solid. If I had another, say, uh, 3 hertz, 1, 2, 3. We're now starting to get the rotation coming on, so let me go back 3, 1, 2, 3. 
So you know, as they say that you know a blind man in the dark night wouldn't see any problems with that. Um, so I'm I'm going to pretty well live with that. Like I say, I'm not after absolute accuracy, but um, you know I think given that I don't have on this um, SI5351, it's not sitting in any kind of oven. And if I was to touch the actual the chip itself, as the the heat of my finger will actually cause the um, as you can see here, it's caused it to go off. Um, I have had that SI5351 running now for a good hour or so up in this room um, it's pretty close to 25 degrees so it's not far off um, a standard temperature for the for you now it's just starting to slow down now because it's starting to cool down from having my finger on it uh, so suffice to say that's been pretty well heat soaked and is sitting at roughly the normal temperature for the shack and then I've run the calibration to try and get the output frequency to be as close as I can to the um, to the reference oscillator. Now I've probably made a total sham of this um, or hack of this this explanation. Um, I apologise for that. Um, you know, I've said many times I don't have a script. I just sort of just talk as, as things come to mind. Um, but you know, just to I guess to recap, there's different ways to to do this calibration. Um, whatever way you do it, you, you do need to run if you are going to use this ether kit. Um, calibration, run the example calibration program, bring up the serial monitor to allow you to change the frequency and then have some means of uh, measuring the output of the SI5351 in terms of frequency. And as I said before, you don't have to, um, but you may potentially be uh, off by you know a few tens of hertz. Now, the big scale of things, that's not really much at all. Um, but I'll leave that up to individuals to decide if that's good enough or not. Um, noting that we don't have channelized um, uh, channelized channels mainly in the HF band. Righty ho. So, um, what else do I want to cover? And like I said, I don't use that particular method with a, a frequency counter. I've tended to use this method up here using the XY mode on the scope. Right. Okay. Uh, any questions please sing out, um, if, if, if that didn't make sense sing out again and I'll put another video up, um, I won't repeat this one, I'll just put, I'll put it on up as it is, uh, and like I say hopefully it makes sense, uh, and we'll go from there. For interest sake the, um, the, audio, the audio oscillator is now being built, so that's sitting on that board there, so uh, I will add the, the main volume control for that which sits between um, the 3904 preamp and the main amp uh, later on when it gets mounted on the board, but that's all ready to go based on um, on the weekend's work. Okay, cheers all, um, take care, and I will catch you for the second part of this video, which will be looking at um, what I do in terms of software, right or wrong, for driving or using the uh, the rotary encoder to change the frequency of the SI fifty three fifty one. It's it's a it's 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 some code that I've settled on. Um, over time, I like it, I'm used to it, it's not the only way of doing business, but like I say, I'll cover that in the next video. Okay, cheers all.